Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our fifth lesson on the second topic of Form 3 work which is called Refraction of Light. As usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day which states that nothing is impossible for those who are willing to try. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So, uh, an object underwater or under a glass block when viewed normally appears to be nearer the surface than it is uh, than it actually is. So we can look at uh, a typical example here whereby I have a coin that is placed under uh, the water. So when you view at the top, that is normally when you place your eye somewhere here and view this particular coin uh, normally, that is at perpendicular or at right angles, you just place your eye perpendicularly here so that you view the coin here. So we are placing it perpendicular to avoid uh, things like errors due to parallax. So when you view this particular coin from this particular end, that is the upper end of this particular water, this is uh, the image that will be observed. So we shall have an apparent image whereby the coin will appear to be much closer to the surface of water, that is at the point where you are viewing it. So we call this the apparent image of this particular coin. So the distance, the distance from our apparent image to the surface of water where our eye is or uh, where we are viewing that particular coin normally. So the distance from the eye or at the top of this particular uh, liquid, which is water, to the position where our apparent image is, that distance we call it the apparent depth. So the apparent depth is the distance from the position of the eye or from the surface of the water where our eye is to the position of uh, the location of our apparent image. So we call that the apparent depth. And the actual depth of this particular coin, that is the distance from where our eye is, that is on the surface of the water, to the position, the true position of the coin, that is what we call the real depth. So the real depth is the true depth or the actual depth of that particular coin from the surface of the water or from the point where we are observing uh, that particular coin normally, which is the surface of the water. So that is the real depth. The distance, the vertical distance from the coin uh, measured from the surface of the water. That is our real depth. Then vertical displacement is just the distance between the real depth. That is the difference between the real depth and apparent depth. Therefore, we can conclude that real depth is equals to, remember real depth is the all of this distance, which is equals to apparent depth plus the vertical displacement. So real depth is equals to apparent depth plus the vertical displacement. Then if we want to find the refractive index of the water, like in this case, we are talking of refractive index of a material. In this case, the material through which a refraction is taking place is the water. Therefore, the refractive index of a material or the refractive index of water in this case shall be given by the formula real depth divided by apparent depth. Then we can look at an example which reads that uh, a coin in a glass jar filled with water appears to be 24 centimeters from the surface of the water. So remember appears to be that is the uh, apparent depth or the yeah the apparent depth. So appears the word appears means that is not the true depth of that particular coin. Therefore, we call it the apparent depth or the coin is at an apparent position as shown by this particular dotted uh, uh, dotted uh, rectangle. So a coin in a glass jar uh, in a glass jar filled with water appears to be 24 centimeters from the surface of the water. So remember the distance from the surface of the water that is where our eye is to the position of the our apparent image that is what we are calling the apparent depth. Therefore, the apparent depth in this particular case will be 24 centimeters. So we are required to calculate the height of the water in the jar. So remember the height of the water, that is the real depth or the true depth of that particular coin. Huh? That is from the surface of the water to the, uh, from the lower surface of the water to the upper surface of the water. So we are required to calculate the height of the water in the jar, given that the refractive index of water is 4 over 3. So we just uh, mentioned an equation here that the refractive index of 
a material shall be given by the real depth divided by the apparent depth. Therefore, the material in this case is water and therefore the refractive index of water shall be given by the real depth of the coin uh, in water divided by the apparent depth of that particular uh, coin which is placed in water. Therefore, we are given the refractive index of water as 4 over 3. Remember, this one means uh, the refractive index as the ray moves from air to water because in this case, the upper side, we assume it is air that is there. Therefore, as the rays move from air to water, we are told that the refractive index is 4 over 3. Therefore, we just substitute the values. 4 over 3 shall be given by the real depth, which is the, uh, the height of the water in that particular jar. So, the coin actually is just like this particular coin here. So, the depth or the height of the water, that is the real depth, the distance from the position where our coin is uh, measured from the surface of the water because usually our eye is usually placed on the surface of the water as shown in this particular diagram here. Therefore, 4 over 3, which is the refractive index, is equals to real depth, which is our unknown, divided by the apparent depth. So we are told that uh, a coin in a glass jar filled with water appears to be. So the word appears to be, that means it's not the true depth. Therefore, that becomes the apparent depth or where it appears to be. Therefore, our apparent depth is 24 centimeters. So if I want real depth, I'll multiply both sides by uh, 24 centimeters so that I remain with real depth being equal to uh, the refractive index, which was 4 over 3 multiplied by 24 centimeters. So 3 into 24, that is 8. 8 times 4, we shall get 32 centimeters as our real depth or the distance from the surface of the water uh, to the true uh, position or depth of that particular coin. So in our next example, read that a glass block of thickness 12 cm is placed on a mark uh, drawn on a plain paper. The mark is viewed normally through the glass. So we are required to calculate the apparent depth of the mark and hence the vertical displacement. Then you are given that the refractive index of glass is 3 over 2. So this one means the refractive index from air to glass. So if you are just given the refractive index, we assume that the ray of light is moving from air to that particular medium that you've been given. Therefore, uh, the refractive index from air to glass shall be given by real depth uh, divided by the apparent depth, of course, in glass. So if you are told that a glass block of thickness 12 centimeters, so remember 12 centimeters represents the real depth because that is the true thickness of that particular glass block. Because remember, refraction is taking place through the glass block because the ray of light uh, in this case is moving from air to glass block. Therefore, the, the thickness of the glass block, this particular distance here, will be the real depth. Therefore, the real depth is 12 centimeters. Then you are required to calculate the apparent depth uh, of the mark and hence the vertical displacement. So we said that if you view an object that is placed uh, under maybe a uh, water or a glass, that particular, the image of that particular uh, object appears to be somehow closer to the surface of either the glass block or the water. Therefore, if this is our true position of the object, that is the, uh, the mark which is viewed uh, through that particular glass, then its image will be somewhere here. Somewhere here. Then remember that the position or the distance uh, from the surface of that particular glass block where our eye is, that is at this particular point, to the true uh, position of our coin, that is what we are calling the real depth, which is given as 12 centimeter. Then the distance from our image uh, measured from the top surface of the glass block, that is the apparent depth. Then the vertical, displace, the vertical displacement is always the difference between the real depth and the apparent depth. So for part A, we are required to calculate the apparent depth. So a uh, refractive index as the ray moves from air to glass should be equal to real depth over apparent depth. So refractive index of glass, you are given as 3 over 2. Uh, therefore, 3 over 2 shall be given by the real depth, which is equal to the thickness, the total thickness of this particular glass block, which is 12 centimeter, divided by the apparent depth. So if I want to find the apparent depth, I'll multiply both sides by the apparent depth. 
so that I have uh, 3 over 2 multiplied by apparent depth being equal to 12 centimeters. So if I want to remain by apparent depth only on my left hand side, I'll just multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 over 2 so that 3 over 2 does cancel out. Therefore, 3 over 2, if I multiply it by its reciprocal, which is 2 over 3, it will cancel out on the left-hand side so that I just remain with apparent depth being equal to 12 centimeter times the reciprocal of 3 over 2, which is 2 over 3. So 3 into 12, 4 times, 4 times 2, I'll get 8 centimeters as my apparent depth. So once we have the real depth and the apparent depth, remember earlier on we saw that... Uh, a uh, real depth shall be given by apparent depth plus the vertical displacement. So real depth is equal to apparent depth plus vertical displacement. If I substitute the values that I have, I'll have real depth, which is uh, 12 centimeters. That is the thickness of our glass block, this particular dimension here, being equal to apparent depth that we have just calculated as 8 centimeters plus the vertical displacement. Therefore, if I make vertical displacement the subject of the formula, I'll just take 8 centimeters toward the left-hand side. Therefore, vertical displacement shall be given by uh, 12 centimeters minus 8 centimeters, which will be equal to 4 centimeters. Now, you can also have um, a practical or an experiment uh, whereby you are determining uh, the refractive index through the real and apparent depth method. So the point that you need to always remember is that a graph of real depth against uh, apparent depth, that is that particular graph, is always a straight line graph and in most cases it will always start from the origin. Therefore, uh, a graph of real, that is the real depth and ap against apparent depth, we have said that it will be a straight line graph uh, in most cases starting from the origin. Therefore, if you want to find the gradient of uh, the graph of real depth against apparent depth, the gradient shall be given by change in real depth divided by change in apparent depth. Therefore, the gradient is change in uh, real depth divided by change in apparent depth. So gradient is equal to, because remember gradient is usually change in y divided by change in x, that is from mathematics. But on the y-axis, we have the real depth and on the x-axis, we have the apparent depth therefore gradient shall be given by change in y over change in x the change in y is the change in real depth therefore we have change in real depth divided by change in apparent depth but uh, we have also uh, shown earlier that uh, real depth that is the ratio of real depth and apparent depth shall be given by uh, shall be equal to the refractive index of the material that was being used in that particular case for example, if in this experiment we were using water as our medium, therefore the gradient of uh, of the graph of real depth against apparent depth shall be given shall be equal to the refractive index of water in that particular case. So in case of practicals, just know that a, a graph of uh, the gradient of real depth against apparent depth graph shall always give you the uh, refractive index of the material. Uh, or of the medium that was used in that particular experiment. Then uh, I have an exercise here which I recommend that you should try and do it at your own free time to gauge whether you've understood uh, the examples that we have just dealt with in our previous uh, slides. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that nothing is impossible for those who are willing to try. So the quote is encouraging us not to be afraid of trying out different things just because we fear that they could be impossible. Remember that most of the things that we are enjoying today uh, came into existence uh, because someone somewhere refused to believe in impossibilities. For example, we have the present mobile phones, we have the internet, we have the aeroplanes, we have the social media platforms such as uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, etc. We also have artificial intelligence, etc. So most of the things that we are enjoying today, especially the technology, they came into existence because uh, someone refused uh, to accept uh, the myth of impossibility. So keep trying out new things because you never know 
anything is possible for anyone who is willing and ready to try. And lastly, recall that unless you try and fail, that is, unless you try and fail, comma, you will never know how and where to improve. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much for accompanying me. Until the end of this particular lesson, I do not take it for granted. Let's meet in our next lesson. Thank you very much.